So this particular unit has the front multi-box. This on the cube here gives us access to the front. Now there is a bit of pressure on these latches. When we talk about securing this, you can put a padlock in here. Opening this up, making sure we put pressure on the front. So please, as one of our safety things here, is to open up the front here. That's just gonna release the pressure. Don't let it surprise you when it just pops up. We've now opened it up and I've got LED lights right in here. So working lights for hooking up, working lights for actually using it during a trip. Um, they are really great. The anti-bug lights will keep this whole area safe and really visual. What we have here is a 300 amp lithium battery. So this lithium battery will have an app that will be part of your kit there. Uh, you can access and check it through the app. We have a charger here. There's three points that we want to be aware of. The charger here should generally always be on. We have a charger here and an inverter. If we need 240 power to our power points inside, we need to plug something in, turn the inverter on, the blue light is on, we're now using power just being on standby. Really important to save power. I'm not using a 240 power point for any appliance. I'm gonna turn that off. That's gonna increase my stay or my life in the outback of using that. Please remember a USB inside for a phone is gonna use one or two amps. Using a USB through a 240 power point will be up to 20 amps to charge that small phone. So please try to make sure you're using the 12 volt and the inverter on the larger appliances. The other main point is that we do have an isolator up here, some resettable fuses. If we are isolating this or we don't have any power, that is the first thing that we do wanna check is that our battery is turned on and we can test that by seeing the brakes working or anything there inside. That's your main isolator for our 300 amps of lithium batteries in the Kimberly Cube. We're about to close it up. So what we're gonna do here again is just pushing down in the middle. I don't wanna give it a twist. So if I push down in the middle, it's gonna be much easier. Get that hook underneath. So just like that, hook underneath, flat hand, a padlock there, a padlock on my gas bottle and a door lock on my kitchen or doors. And those are the keys we're secured, our little Kimberly Cube in the Outback. This is one of the most important parts with the Kimberly Cube off-road van. What we wanna do is hooking up to the vehicle and there's some steps in here that are do not pass go, do not continue until you've done or checked off these steps. What we have here is a DO35 hitch. This is going to be a pin included that will attach to the vehicle. When attaching to the vehicle, this will then lower down with the jockey wheel over top of that pin. What happens, it drops on the pin and we're going to push the button and engage the lock. Now, as you can see, push the button, hold it open. I've got open access there. Please make sure that that's open when you are putting it on the vehicle. I call that an apple and what I do is push the button. It now looks like a pear and when it's locked on like a pear, it does mean the cap will fit. If you ever find that the cap is not fitting, then you know it has not been locked or engaged. We're going to release this. Again, it's time to remove from the vehicle, hold the red button, push the pear back, leave an open access there and that there is our DO35 hitch and I'm gonna back up onto my vehicle and I haven't got it quite right. If I can't pull this sideways, getting it close and then releasing the handbrake will allow that to drop on quite well. We're gonna talk about the handbrake next. I've arrived at camp and the first thing I wanna do is apply my handbrake. It is here with the Hydro Pro. It is a uh, brake fluid, an actuator or a pump inside here, pumping fluid along. Please remember when the arrow or handle is in line with the drawbar, in line with the vehicle, I am able to drive. In line allows flow of brake fluid on my disc brakes. I've now decided to put the handbrake on. I have to build up pressure or hear sound. I hear sound, lock off the pressure. We've now built up pressure onto those disc brakes and that is not going anywhere. If you ever find that the vehicle is doing more than two and a half, thousand revs or struggling to get out of a parking spot, you have left the brakes on. If you're ever doing high revs, trying to tow this little camper, please make sure we go release the brake in line. We're now ready to drive and that can move around. Again, handbrake on, make noise. 
lock noise, lock pressure, and that's now good to stay. That is our handbrake. Please always engage that when you're disconnecting from the vehicle. The next one we have here is our plugs. Seven pin plug is standard with most vehicles nowadays. This is our plug here for lights and brakes. There should be an electric brake controller in the vehicle that will actuate how much power is going to those brakes. If you are driving and you hear the brakes going full on and it is very jumpy, very jerky, very uncomfortable, there is something happening between your brake controller and your trailer plug. So always make sure that that is operating and we're gonna show you easy tests to do. Brake controller is gonna be set up in that kind of halfway, four out of five, four or five out of 10 on your brake controller and you want it to be smooth, not pushing you or not jerking you along. And that would be between the vehicle plug and the actuator and the brake controller. Anderson plug is for charging. A 50 amp Anderson plug does want to be plugged in. If I was doing a pre-inspection on this camper, I would just be making sure that those silver tabs are pushed in. If you find that you're not getting any charge, check those tabs and the tabs on the vehicle. That's part of my pre-inspection to always check my lights, signals before I hit the road. And when I put my foot on the brake, I'm gonna hear that noise. It confirms that I have brakes on my travel with my work vehicle. What we're doing here with the chains, again, we always want to cross the chains. We have a lot of chain here. So if we're crossing this, this is giving us, if that ever jumped off, it's going to fall into a basket. Please remember, do not, do not pass go, do not drive away without crossing your chains there. Now there is actual movement through there and these are set up so well for like a Telstra Ute where you've got a tray back and the hitch out there. Please be careful in reversing that you're not gonna jackknife it, but it's got a great turning circle. These reflectors here are gonna give you an indication of your turning. They will always turn forward quite well. It's that reversing into a sharp spot that you do wanna keep an eye on that or get a spotter. Here, the last one is when I do hook up to the vehicle, we're talking about the jockey wheel. Now what will happen is this is quite a high off-road unit. I'm winding it up, winding it up to get it off the vehicle. And as I get that off the vehicle, I end up with it really high. I've got an indicator right here that is telling me my max height. Please do not push, pull, drag, skull drag, rescue, anything above that max height. That is a weak point. I can go straight up and get that off. I've now removed the vehicle. I'm gonna lower it down below that line in order to make sure that that is not too long. That's gonna ensure that I don't damage the jockey wheel when I'm out there. Now, this is a removable handle. We've got two adjustments here. One of them is that I can go actually physically up and down. So I've wound my jockey wheel down. You can see my jockey wheel is perpendicular. I've got it underneath the front. That gives me a real stable middle base. When I'm packing it away, it's gonna be perpendicular all the way around here. As you can see these holes and a pin, I'm gonna pick up this middle pin. That pin there is gonna go, it's gonna include right lock perpendicular to the jockey wheel. I can then raise that up and flip it over with a wheel out sideways. That is the best way to look after the gear. The wheel won't hit the ground, won't interfere with the box. Having your jockey wheel perpendicular, making sure you take the handle off and put it inside here or the vehicle. Those are the real important things when you're hooking up or dis disconnecting from a vehicle with your new Kimberly Cube.